Uh, I'd like to call to order the Townsend Conservation Commission meeting uh, August 9th, 2023 at 7.01 p.m. Can I roll call, please? Jim James Gates? Yeah, Jim Just speak a little loud, but we can't hear us for some reason. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Is anyone else reporting? Um, Matt, can you put that? Say, got it. Please. Thank you. Um, chairman's additions and/or deletions. Uh, we are 3.5, uh, which is vote for officers. We are moving that to uh, our meeting on August 23rd. 2023. Hope everyone will be here. Be back. Um, and we are going to add 3.6 on 158 Main Street enforcement for um, discussion. Cool. Cool. <clears throat> 1.4 Chairs Report. Um, we held a uh, pre-construction meeting uh, at 158 Main Street on August uh, 4th. Uh, the property owner, contractor, engineer, um, agent, land use coordinator, and uh, I and Mr. Dory attended it. The site walk went over everything and the expectations. Um, and they commenced work on the lower basin area. Uh, which is under the enforcement order. And then there's also been um, uh, site checks for 155 Main Street, which is ongoing, but um, progress is being made. Um, more hay bales are added, and the area was seeded and uh, rolled in, seed was rolled in. So hopefully it will pop soon. 1.5 review and approve the meeting minutes from 6 28 23. I'm sorry, I don't interrupt. With 155, we're just waiting to see mm -hmm. two, two, three inches up of green growth, both sides on Mr. Shepherd's side. So it's clean, back drag, seated on the back side, on the half side of the bales, the material so filled up and scooped up, dispersed on the upward radiant. That was all seeded, graded. Two extra bales were put to the right side and the left side. So now there is a large capability of water slow down in there at this time. It so slows it down, still allows it to go through. Correct. Um, there, was a, there was so filled up from uh, the rain that we had yesterday. Um, stuff did move a little, but not as bad. No it, it did roll a little bit. It did get, uh, but it was. Filtering through. Okay. Right. So there was a like better part of six inches of silt behind the bales. So that's what right. I guess the only thing that would be needed is a little touch up seating where it washed, just so all those areas crap. That's all. Good. Perfect. Um, review and approve meeting minutes from June 28th, 2023. Okay, on my Yes, I did. Um, so we need a motion and a second to approve, please. Motion to approve the meeting, the uh, minutes from the meeting. What was it again? Uh, June 28th, 28th, um, 2023. Roll call vote, please. James, yes. James Gates, yes. Jamal, yes. One point six. Meetings report. Matt. <clears throat> it's covered uh, July 27, 2023, August 9, 2023, today. Um, building permit into the environmental signatures. Uh, signed off on 19 Pheasant Ridge Road. This is for a detached garage. And I went out there a couple weeks ago just to make sure there were no weapons nearby. Um, another one for 18 Shirley Road, which is going above ground pool. And again, I uh, went out there on a quick site visit to make sure there were no weapons. 
was real life. Um, there were no referrals completed. Um, there was one board of health lab signature. Um, of course, 56 page right the road, which we approved. Uh, we issued the OOC, or it hasn't been issued yet, but we approved the NOI um, at our last meeting. Um, completed approvals. Uh, we have a partial COC um, for Severance Bank Terrence. That was issued uh, July 27th. Uh, we have an OOC um, for 158 Main Street that was issued August 2nd. Um, there was an administrative approval um, for a, uh, a dead tree removal at 19 Sonora Road, issued July 28th, for um, the removal of one dead tree uh, on Vincent Pond. He's removing it by hand. Um, applications, uh, there is an NOI for 66 Bayberry Hill Road. Hearing was on the first hearing on July 12th. Uh, Safe visits were conducted on July 6th and July 21st. Uh, COC for 27 Scales Lane. Uh, site visit uh, was conducted on August 3rd. Uh, an emergency certificate for Old Meeting House Road uh, for culvert replacement um, issued August 2nd, so it will be ratified uh, tonight's meeting. Um, miscellaneous uh, enforcement order and OOC for one being Main Street uh, compliance and inspections ongoing. There was a pre construction meeting on August 4th, and um, as discussed at that meeting, there were a list of field changes. Um, one, uh, move detention infiltration basin 70 feet uh, to the west. This will result in the basin being in an already disturbed area and not require any additional vegetation removal. Uh, rip, rip wrap overflow uh, will be added to the newly created berm adjacent to the rail trail. Uh, vegetate the non eroded swale to the south of the berm. Four, rip wrap the eroded swale between the swale to be vegetated and a ditch adjacent to the rail trail. And five, we vegetate the new burn and eliminate plantings along the existing burn since it is already been cleared. Is that a singular or a plural on the burns as far as the rip wrap overflow? You only did it on the one burn? The lesson burn, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, a minor stormwater application at 94 Pittsburgh Road is undergoing peer review by an engineering firm. A uh, letter was sent to 155 Main Street um, on August 2nd to add more hay bales and to remove soil. Um, we we'll talk about this in the chair's report. Um, I corresponded with the 60 Meadow Road property owner and he will be attending tonight's meeting to discuss uh, the unpermitted animal include. Uh, discussions with cemetery and parks to use remaining budget of the invasive species training to see the hill at Adam Sam. Um, I'm meeting with Roger again on Monday um, to talk, talk more about this. So we have about $250 left uh, in our invasive species training budget. And uh, General Walkowitz recommended that I could use that to buy seed, uh, wetland seed. Um, I and we actually had recommendations. I'd rather go to a plot on the side for training crops and spend the money on putting it yeah. on it into the river. Yeah, I'm going to see if I get any idea. He didn't know how to do it. We well, didn't get that. We had more than $250. Right. Yeah. What's the new trip that it's going to grab into? It's going to live off of the map. Right. It's going to dissolve the right. It's been a sandy bank forever. It's going to. I can't see it. Okay. If they want, put more walls so. out. It was just an idea that you don't have some that I talked about here. I can see, 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 the, uh, I can see the utilization of that money going to something else. Mm -hmm. that means that's just taking the money and throwing it on the ground and it flow down the Okay. I will let them know that's done. Uh, yeah. Maybe ask if they have it. If there are any tools they can okay. use, asking their parks, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, that would help in their or system of invasive removals. I mean, the weed wrench, okay. whatever. The no weed wrench, no, yeah, some, something, something. I, I got bored and I went off and started using a workbook. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, 100 Fitchburg property owner uh, got an appointment with a wetland scientist uh, for August 24th to inspect the property. Um, he will present his consultant's findings at our next uh, operation review meeting with the September 15th. 
Ah, uh, Matt, and that's, I'm sorry to interrupt, and that's for what again? That's for the ponds that was filled in, and then the pond house. That's, yeah. So that's, uh, I was going to ask about that. I was sure if it was on the going. Yeah. He's aware that working on it. We told him he had to prove that it was That it's not what it is. Okay, so if you did bring in a wetland scientist, they did not walk down the way. He has an appointment. I said I'm August 24th. Yeah. He was he was doing a good job of reaching out to people which is good. Mm -hmm. I think they're all busy right now, so it took a little while to figure out on their schedule. Very good. Um, uh, a minor stormwater permit for 20th February Hill Road was issued on July 31st, and inspection for installed stormwater control was conducted on August 1st, and it didn't check out. What about, since this covers up until today, what about 123 Main Street? 123 Main Street, I went out there today with uh, Janet from the building, building yeah. office. Do you have a map for the permit, for the plan from the permit? Uh, I don't have the plan online, but it was for an addition to the house. Um, that was just oh, just over 100 feet away from the stream um, to the west of the property. Um, and we recommended they put uh, uh, straw bottles on the property. They did that. Um, but then Jessica noticed driving by today that um, there was some soil pile up. Yeah, it, looks like a park, it looks like a parking area. Yeah. yeah. 128 Main again? 123 Main Street is crossing the little hay field. Towards the harbor? Yes. You know, there's the two hay fields, the smaller one, the first one. Okay, and then you're right across the street. They did an addition, but it looked like they used some of the soil to build a little parking area. So and that's the way new construction area where we have all the long way to the front, to the left where the new building is. Nope, this is before that. It's in the wood, it's before that. Um, you know, you know, the culvert that cuts under 119? Yes. Between the two hay fields, yeah, it's right in there. Okay, okay, okay. But, um, it looks like they put a parking area in. Let me go by, and that is a wet area right there. Yeah, Jenny gave him, Jenny gave him a call. I had heard what Jenny here was. So we're still running without a building inspector. Uh, a full time building inspector, correct? Is there an interim presently? Uh, there is a uh, part time. Mm -hmm. So we do have somebody in the building department that is going out to look at these public those things with Jan, right? I believe so. Okay. All right. But you're also going out with Jan. You said you went out there today. So okay. if that area was in question. Why didn't we issue a cease and desist? Um, there was no one at the sites. Um, the I have a thing that the piece of paper you take the door. She contacted. She contacted the contractor. Um, I haven't heard. Uh, we're back in that discussion where we talk about either a putting up straw water immediately around that silt pile um, to avoid going in the stream, or moving that pile out of the wetland buffer entirely. Um, Causes just as much trouble. Did they put the straw water up that they were? They did. Okay. Um, I don't know if a stop work order is what's needed, but that's going to mean the piles even longer. It's, not a pond. it's it's leveled out. It's, it's a park there. Yeah. yeah. But they filled in an area that probably shouldn't have been filled in or it should have been right. discussed. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Um, I'm going to see uh, what Janet uh, had to report on that. But well, No, we shouldn't have to wait for Janet. We should be the ones. It's, really it's, not, our, our, it's not under our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you guys went out so, so, I know you're out, Matt, the rest of the right maybe, Matt, I mean, maybe Jimmy needs to knock on the door. I'm going to take a well, I'll take a run on this. And look, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do we have a name? Uh yes. Are you, you doing you can give it to one for the beginning Okay. I'll give you one. Seventeen, so um was there anything else in that? Uh -huh. um, that's it. Um we'll ask Chef's to if you guys have anything to add later. Um I'm gonna go ahead. On uh, 715, uh, 2.1, notice of intent DEP number 308-0700, PWV 2023-153, continued from 726. Mr. Sandils is here to Mm -hmm. Oh, you can put it up on the screen. Yeah, well, you're going to still have to show us because 
We can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the last meeting, we held a we held a hearing open yes. uh, because we were filing for a stormwater permit, and in case anything changed, we wanted you guys to see it. So, go back into it. So here's the the picture, picture. Yeah. Thank you. Here, here's the area that is in within the buffer zone, the two houses and the crossing. We did add we did add another infiltration basin here, but th there's a hundred foot buffer, so it's three or four hundred feet away from any wetlands. Right. That would and that was the only change we made with our filing for stormwater. Sure, yeah, that was an enlargement to any of the stormwater that's gonna flow through that and go over into the adjacent property. Correct. Correct. That's that's additional mitigation to stop to mitigate for the flow that's created by the the new impervious area. Would you say you're going above and beyond as far as with the stormwater? I'd say I'd say we down in. We've met the we've met the letter of the law for a stormwater permit that towns are required. We don't even trigger a stormwater permit under DEP. Correct. So we've met we've met the the towns and regulations for stormwater. Um, I know that the language is still reviewing the stormwater application. Right, we don't have it here right yet. Right. Is there a chance that there would be plan revisions after their review? Um, I I I doubt it. I doubt it. And if there were any changes, we wouldn't be changing anything in here anyhow because we don't have a lot of room in there to change anything. Anything that we change would be ancillary to, to the driveway and the outside the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. And if we if for some unforeseen reason we had to change something, we'd have to come back. We'd either have to come back and ask for a, a modification. Or worst case scenario, we have to do a new file. But right. I don't anticipate either of those things happen. Okay. No, <laughs> you don't see any issue with the DEP coming through. We'll, no, well, we're you know, once you I we already have our DEP comments in number, we've addressed those, and now we're the last the last step for us with DEP is for your approval. So, so DEP that DEP years. will have no oversight over the stormwater, that's just the town by law. Very good. So that's the only change. Over. That was the only change. And you did the reclamation. Did that get increased? No, because we didn't. We it's just it's a one to one replication. Twelve hundred. It was fifteen hundred. Okay. All right. Shifting that it's I just I, I vaguely remember hearing something about it was increased or wasn't. I don't think so. No. Yeah, all right. Then I, I think what in there. What we increased was that basin that's outside the jurisdiction. And other than that, there's no other changes. Do we have any public comment or questions? I, I think I have a minor question. I might check with you. Do you mind actually just introducing yourself? I know you have already twice, but just the formality. Jim Monroe, 40 Bay Burrito Road, my wife, Martha. Thank you. Um, on the uh, sheet one of the map, there's a little insert. Um, and there's an erosion control area. Mm -hmm. uh, can I show it to you very quickly? Sure. Yeah. Or maybe you can put that sheet back up there, Matt. Oh, you, you might need to open it up, Stan, because it's yeah. 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 The 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 well, the continuation yeah. is up in the corner. Yeah. Yep. Um, just oh, very yeah. Very mm -hmm. 
is not mine, is it? So no, it yeah, that's where the house, that's where the HSA house is. Okay. Yeah. That's that's not right. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's, that's probably that back lot line on that three three hundred feet or so, so it's probably four hundred feet to your property line from that. Yeah. That was it. That was it. Okay. Other questions? Uh, the one that I uh, brought up before was the wildlife statement. Uh, that was in the bylaws. I just want to know how that happens and what I get a chance to see. Sam, you've been doing this 45 years. <laughs> well, unless we're in in an endangered species habitat, typically there is there is no uh, wildlife It really assessment. presents no restrictions right, to it. Right. If it was a high priority habitat, if it was <clears throat> a farm, these, whatever, correct. Which there really isn't in there. And there's no impediment. It isn't like we have a 10, ten foot high retaining wall that's an impediment to wildlife movement back in the In other words, there would be no restriction for animal moth, right? Or any yep. game trail area disruption will not there take will, place or anything. anything. No more than anybody else's house. Right. Now, the DP had concerns about that. It was mentioned in the comments, too. Right. I and they the bylaws says right. must include a discussion. Right. So we are just and yeah. that's our, we are discussing yeah. it. And I don't know what you so I understand is a part of how you feel about the property. I do. Where I am on West Meadow Road, I was confronted with the same thing 30 years ago. Option was gonna be Houses built behind my house, and I was going to visibly see them, hear them, and live with them the rest of my life. Bought the profit. All right. I don't, that's not a fair thing to say to you, or if you don't like it, buy the profit. That isn't what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is I am totally on the same page with you. Where I am, on, on, it's my piece of the rock, and I value. My dog, cat, moose, all the animal and the wildlife and my water and everything. So I understand where you're coming from. And that's the reason why I am on conservation. So when these things come up, we can address that with these people that are concerned about that. Because if I thought someone was going to build a lot of houses, except I'd fight it to the no end. I'll lay down in front of you, but, no. but the process. There, it, it's they have the process that are available to do this, but it doesn't mean we won't keep an eye on it. It doesn't mean that we're going to ignore it if there are our problems that arise. Absolutely. You need to come to us, and I'll get right into it. I will stand here and I'll do whatever I can to help keep your area pristine. You, you know, your creatures of habit are out there. You know, we're whatever not you see. Anything. We just want to make sure that we'll be monitored. Absolutely. And that's the good thing about this whole process. Once there's, <clears throat> once if, if there were no wetlands here, we wouldn't even be here and there'd be no oversight. So with, with them getting an order of conditions, they, Matt or whoever, they have the right to come out and inspect things. Even if nobody calls with a complaint, they'll know they can come out and look at things and say, right, and say this, you know, hey, you need to fix this. This isn't right or whatever. So that's, this process is, Actually, it protects you more than it protects the landowner. Because the landowner, kind of the onus is on the landowner That's to do things right. correctly. Yeah. Help correctly, yeah. Thank you. Yep. I appreciate the discussion. And in going a little further into this, I mean, I don't know how much longer I'll be on the commission, but I can see it going for a while longer along with the agriculture. But even if I'm not, I'd like to have an open open communication with you. Know, know where I live, come down, knock on the door, say, hey, come on. Guess what's going on up here? Let's throw boots on us. We'll see what's happening. I don't care if I'm on the commission or off the commission. Still involved in my town. I love my town. I've been living here since 1959. Brought up here, my parents, the whole thing. So it's not a matter of sympathetic to what I understand where you're coming from. And I will give you my word. I mean, I'm sure we'll keep an eye on it. I'm, you know, absolutely. I can talk to that when Jim wasn't even on the commission. He called me one day and said, Hey, what the heck's going on off the street for me? Why are these trucks going by my house? He <laughs> <laughs> calls me. He calls me. You know, so, doesn't matter if you're a commission or not. 
we live in this town. And I, when we on West West Monroe, there was only two houses. It's changed. It's changed a lot. This house is being built today on West Monroe Road. When it was just two, I think we're up to 100. You know, when there would be one, maybe two cars up and down the road a day, <laughs> you need both ways pulling out on West Monroe now. So I do understand what you're saying. You know, come and visit the farm, come on down and see me. Get some garlic, you know where I'm coming from. I really appreciate it. You know, <laughs> it's true. No, and we all do it for the same reasons. And I do it because I get two young boys that I want to enjoy. We're very lucky with what we have in this community and the nature. And just last, last night, I saw it. I see bald eagles all the time. Right? I saw one last night, it was ginormous. <laughs> I'm almost so, getting nervous. Yes, because the goats are out. <laughs> but we're, we're lucky to have what we have here, to, to have the people that fight for what we have still, and um, you know, to get the younger generation involved and uh, appreciate it, and um, so that people want to stay a little more moved here. Or that is growth, but being careful with it and making sure that it's not taken advantage of. Yeah, we, we've got eagles as well. Backyard. Yeah. We, have, we have everything on, on the meadow. You know, and then I'm appointed my mother and father on um, conservation commission, zoning board, ZBA, Carl's school committee back in the 60s, 70s. So I saw my mom and dad going to refill. A conservation, like, oh, okay, good luck, see you later. You know, mm -hmm. so you know, I don't know if that's been any comfort for anybody. So, I could, mm -hmm. you know, and we need more of us mm -hmm. on me anyway. I think oh. that's one. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, right. Pat, do you have anything you want to add to comments? Matt, I know you had some special permission you wanted to discuss. Um, and we're still kind of time. So, well, I just have a lot of life too. I get deer every night. Love it. I watch mm -hmm. make sure we, when my dog goes out, that they leave. I don't want my dog to go out barking at them. So, I enjoy them a whole lot. Turkeys all the time. It, it's great. I know I've seen so much wildlife. So, I didn't know where I lived that we didn't have any cats. So, I really appreciate them coming. Stand. Matt, what were the uh, special conditions that you wanted to? So, some that I thought of uh, we can discuss um, are uh, no fertilizers or de icers used in wetland buffers during construction. Uh, future property owners should be made aware that the use of fertilizers or de icers is not permitted in wetland buffers without approval from the Conservation Commission. Uh, special care must be taken near the drain. Uh, crossing of the web. So, what are they going to use? Or maybe an envi environmentally friendly fertilizer? Well, I'm not going to be icing. This is for their lawns and fertilizers? Well, just in general. Just a thought, just to avoid any so sand, sand creates silt. Silt clogs up the flow and creates havoc. Yes, I, I think an environmentally friendly the icer would be. Um, but yeah, sand. You say no to the ice, or oh, not really tied to the I don't know if the state has uh, recommended environmentally friendly the ices. Let's look at the big picture with the ice. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's salt. They salt these roads from one end of the other mm -hmm. over every bridge. Over uh, every that's, road. A dip, dip, you're, that's a slippery slope. It, 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 it's, it's a, a, it's a, a fluoride slope. Fluoride or they do not do any, they hurt the fisheries. It's a fact. Yeah. Look at 90, Route 94. The only way they were allowed to expand that was they had to come up with the sure Green Snow Pro yeah. initiative. Mm -hmm. I've held my certification for several years when I worked in New Hampshire. It, it's a big thing. The sodiums and the fluorides, you know, 
they are safer though than sand because mm-hmm. sand fills uh, catch basins, clogs rivers, streams, brooks. All right, um, I mean, it's all not cross because they're going to sweep it in every year, and after it's and that's sweeping it's done, it. is when the real soap presents itself. And the heat of the road edges are a foot higher than the water running down, and then it just so it's truly how do you have to enforce a restriction that you tell people that they can't put salt on that driveway so they can make it to the house to survive? It's mm-hmm. with fertilizer. Mm-hmm. I've, seen, I've, I've seen it on almost all all things like this. That ends up being a condition. Yeah. I don't know how you enforce it. it it's a I mean, let's just look at it. Again. It's it's all sense. You saw somebody out there. You know, it was a condition and somebody was out there solving, you could say, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, I, I, don't think, I don't think that's possible, but they are usually a condition that ends up in, <coughs> in, in an order of conditions. Yeah, they they usually end up in I, I don't think they're enforceable, but I, that's what I'm trying to say. I, I it, language is good, it sounds good, and everybody and I get it. But I think it, it might it comes you guys in our standard order conditions too. Right. So I think it covers you guys if it's in there. But in our standard order conditions, it does state that. It does. And it, it, it is, and so that's okay. Standard order conditions. So keep going. We're not trying right. to tear you apart. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So you can cross that one out. Um, material stockpiles to be placed on level ground outside of wetland buffers should be properly contained. Is that on the plan? Is that should be on the plan. I didn't notice um, on the plan where you put it. I don't have that on the plan, but we'll we'll add that. We'll put it. We will. I think Matt's. It does outside. Outside of the flip buffer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any stock? Is that something else? Yes. Okay. okay. When we did the uh, the uh, regulation, we did. Anytime you want to chime in, Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, You're just really distant. It's like I can tell you guys are like yelling from back here tonight. So, so. You were, Dave, Dave funny only told us we had to yell tonight because. You're not yelling enough then. Yell more. Does it sound angry? <laughs> I can yell and not sound angry. We could slide the table closer for that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep going. It's, you're doing great. I, I just, I Google, okay, well, okay, I'll chime in. I was Googling while you guys were talking. Magnesium chloride is considered the least toxic de-icing salt, mm-hmm. um, blah, 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 but also calcium magnesium acetate is considered the best choice per what Penn you, State you, Extension. I just, I just, that was the, that was the condition because... <laughs> In my subdivision, we're part of our yard is in the wetland buffer, and that was a condition for with our deed. And I don't remember exactly what the word is, but also we never mind. I won't say any more on public recording. But yeah, we don't we don't know either. We don't know what to use. So, but but anyway, that just that just that's why I thought of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I okay. get what she's saying. Which is the most expensive, which is the least invasive. Ours is the way it is. Um, so Stan's going to add stockpiling location on the plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will add that. And it'll be on the, that'll, it'll be outside the buffer zone. It'll be on the plan that stormwater rolls the fruit. Yep. Um, Another one is uh, follow all conditions outlined in the stormwater management permit uh, from the planning board, uh, and the conservation commission should be notified of any plan revisions that occur during the stormwater management uh, permit review. Um, obviously, if there's anything that's changed in the wetland buffers, you need to come back in front of us. Right. But if you're just making minor changes outside of that, no. um, just so we have the most updated plan. Um, and then the last two are mentioned on the plans, but I just want to make special note of them. Um, before filing a request for a certificate of compliance, planting shall have a two growing season success monitoring to file and be considered for a certificate of compliance. At least 75 percent of plants need to survive, at least 74 of the 98 plants uh, mentioned on the plan. 
Uh, the owner or applicant is responsible for replanting if the survival rate is below 75% prior to requesting a certificate of compliance. Um, and again, you mentioned on the plan, so I want to make a special note of it. Um, and then another one that you mentioned on the plan uh, under oversight monitoring um, was that after two growing seasons, a wetland specialist will be required to determine vegetation success. Uh, vegetation, uh, vegetation development and regulatory compliance before a certificate of compliance can be considered. So a wetland science is that certified that it's up to go and um before they find the CO2. But how many pounds in your bell now? Many hundreds. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I had that you use. So noted. Um I, I don't see why we as long as the stockpile location is added, I, I don't see any other reason not to um approve this tonight. I have no problem approving it off as long as no, I don't I I foresee no problem. I once again you monitor the salt this way to make sure nobody uses it on. Who's the salt monitor in town? <laughs> and we can we get a subcommittee for a salt monitor? We yeah, salt zone. <laughs> it might help. I mean you can just you can make a condition like you can just reword that condition. Um like so there was something about special care must be taken near the driveway crossing of the wetland. So I don't know. I mean, at least during construction, while things are all, you know, disturbed. So, so just yeah, maybe instead of sort of cross out fertilizer beaters, instead have a condition that special care must be taken near the driveway crossing of the wetland to ensure that pollution is still in. Common sense, environmental awareness. Right. So it's there, it's in the special conditions, it's, mm -hmm. it's highlighted. And it protects you guys that you put something in there. So in case we see somebody so somebody does out. something, they can't so say, well, it wasn't in the order conditions. So Matt, make sure you take note of that, but so, <laughs> no, so noted. Okay. Um, Stannis, are there um like curbs or anything on the driveway crossing proposed? Okay. That might be good just to like divert it away from draining right into the wetland. Or can, I guess, could there be curbs proposed? Wow. <laughs> actually, actually uh, there is there is a uh, there is a berm. There is a uh, there's a head wall where the crossing is, mm -hmm. and that will act as a as a berm there. Push it right, left, right. Okay. The head, wall, the head wall for the culvert will actually act as a berm. Mm -hmm. I'll do the best I can on this motion, but where are we in the moment? So session that you did it. Special conditions that Matt has noted. Okay. With the standard order condition. All right. So notice okay. notice of the 10 DE 308 0700 DW 2023 153. Um special order of conditions have been noted for any um fertilizers, salt. Special care needs to be taken, and it will be in the order of conditions and will be on the deed. It will be aware, made aware to the owners, along with the other special conditions discussed previously. Along with the three other special order, four other special order conditions on location 66 Baker Hill Road, um, et cetera, et cetera. Good enough. The an issue, an, yeah, an issuance of uh, order conditions, yeah. attachment A, and special conditions. Okay. Yeah. So be it. Do we have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Jim Durham. James Gates, yes. Uh, um, we need a motion and a second to close the hearing. Um, motion to close the hearing. In the first, what was the first one you wanted? Other than that, that was it. Exactly. All right. 
motion to close the hearing. Oh, no. Six six Barry Howard. A second. Roll call vote, please. Jim, Dory, Kai. Uh, James, yes. Thank you. 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 It's true. It's true. We bought the garlic too. You know, seven business. Seven forty one two point two uh, discussion sixteen met over property owner regarding unpermitted animal enclosure adjacent to a river bay and enclosures in the river front area and within bordering land subject to flooding. Uh, if you don't mind introducing yourself, Corey. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, Matt, if you don't mind giving a brief history on this in the structure here. Um, so we got a discussion. We received notice that the animal enclosure was placed near the river bank um, back in July. Um, and I sent a letter um, asking to visit the site just to see what's going on. Um, and we went on the sidewalk, um, me and Patricia, uh, on July 25th. Um, I brought up uh, the sidewalk and what was going on at the July 26th meeting um, during the agent's report. Um, you guys mentioned that the uh, animal closure should be moved considering how close it is to the riverbank and the fact that it was permitted. Um, so the next day I emailed Corey um, asking him to move it uh, and giving him uh, a two week deadline um, before the next meeting to move it. Um, he had several questions um, that I thought were best discussed in front of the commission. Um, so that is why he was able to attend tonight. When did you give the two week notice to have things moved? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Has it been moved? I, I, Excuse me? No. Okay. I, I, I took out the two week notice after inviting to the meeting. Well, the two week notice stands. Okay. So anything, no, no, anything after today, you're going to be in violation. All right, if you're but here to argue about I'm whether not, it is a good thing or a bad thing. No, I have questions to ask about it. I have questions to ask about it. Okay. I have, I have quite a few questions uh, yeah. pertaining to the property, the surrounding property, uh, and things just that didn't make sense to me about the order. Um, mm -hmm. So essentially, right, you're saying that we built a building too close to the river. Mm -hmm. We have no argument about that, right? It, it needs to be moved. The two week thing. It basically the email said that nobody cares if we go through and just destroy the land while we move this. They said you have two weeks. We don't care. Well, it, it didn't say we don't care. Yeah, it says I, we're not as concerned about I you. Feel popular. Yeah, I need mean, yeah. working on that. So what I said was, look, I can bring a backhoe down there, pick it up, move it like we've always moved it, and. It's, you know, what if we get the back of stuff? Then we're in a completely different problem. So the email I sent um, said that the conservation commission discussed this at their meeting last night and came to the determination that due to the public growth and the high likelihood of continued flooding. I don't need to do this. I'm, I'm, I'll be all right on this. Keep going, guys. Um, and do uh, the high likelihood of continued flooding, the enclosure must be moved. I know that the ground is still wet, but it is important to move the enclosure before any more flooding occurs. Please move the enclosure uh, close to the five pine trees you want to take down, or even further from the book if you if you so choose, and send me photos once it is moved before the next conservation meeting on August 9th. I would also recommend having some kind of a road control barrier in place before moving the enclosure to ensure that nothing ends up in the brook. So I didn't mention that. To put right, it right you want to, to barrier off the brook, right? But if we bring in a backhoe and pick it up and the backhoe sinks mm -hmm. in the mud, then we're not going to. I don't think we're going to allow you to get anywhere near that wetland with a piece of equipment. I'll have to make a few more questions. You'll take it apart and, and move it. That's okay. No, you, you don't. You don't have to but, say to me. No, is I, it, I, is it, I, if I get that piece of equipment stuck in the wetland. 
That makes no sense. You're not yeah. working with us. No, it's, but no, so, no, wait a minute. Don't interrupt me. That has to be moved. That's fine. And we plan on moving. We need more time to move it. it which okay. is what I asked. Not, but I also it's have other questions. I also okay. have other questions. Okay. We, we border questions. that particular brook borders farmland right next door. And they drive their tractors through and hay their fields. So I just don't understand what. You don't understand. Uh, hold on, hold on. What, what don't you understand? You have well, now he said I can't bring a piece of equipment down to move. Right, like you see where my you presented are. as I can bring the piece of equipment down there, but it's I, wet. I could get stuck in there. It's wet, right? And then we're not going to allow you to bring that piece of right. equipment in there. And I don't want to. Right, okay. because we don't want it to get stuck, which is the concern with the two week deadline. We can't move it that quick. And then my other questions in regards to it's a it's a wild river full of ducks, and we have a house full of ducks next to a river. I, I understand the building's not permitted, right? Had I applied for a permit, and you said say it needs to be thirty feet or fifty feet, whatever it is, um, where would we have ended up? The thirty well, it's a minimum of thirty-five feet, right? At least thirty-five. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I'm saying, common sense should have drawn you not put a chicken coop or a duck coop in flowing water. So we haven't ever seen the river crest the way it has. The culvert that's been installed in the town. Area. It's common it's sense was drawing you to go. Uh, Visually, it's a wet area. It's not very Any wet. water will rise up to a certain point. Well, but you said it's, not, it's too wet to move, though, but it's not very wet. Well, it's wet now because of the way the year's been. Right. We've uh, never seen it like this. It is in a hundred years, like, like it is in a hundred years. Right. Which means it's done that 1% of the time or whatever the. Yeah, the it's not a scale evaluation. It is. Way no, means, um, no, not necessarily. It happens. Yeah, the flooding is going to see having more and more. Just how the nature of things that are going. Um, if, if you did come in front of us to permit this, yeah, like, like James said, we would have you at least 35 feet away based on notice there. Um, and that's buffer. without any poultry being involved. If right. And poultry, have, we would be even request a fee. And I would have but, actually have requested it before 35 feet because uh, the floodplain goes out. I would have it built out of the floodplain because that, that runs the risk of flooding. Right. That runs about 65 feet further from the stream. Yeah. Well, so that that was my other question: is where the poultry came into it. You know, I was trying to read through and find what I want. You know, just information so I could be informed. Mm -hmm. And I'm I, I, I more specific. Well, I'm informed about how to yeah. properly. So the question is like, why is chicken why is the chicken the problem? So why? The bolt of poultry. Poultry are high in nitrogen. High in nitrogen. That's yeah. simple. That's the problem. So in, the course, in, in, in there, nitrogen. what's going to happen is you're releasing nutrients. It's a nutrient release that's flowing down the river. Let alone if they were diseased, what's flowing down the river in, in, in possibly contaminating other wildlife down there. Along with, the, excuse me. Hopefully not there. Well, hopefully is a good thing. And hopefully my hair grows back someday. That's not the point. These are the things that have been proven over the years that these animals can release if they're contaminated or if there's a sickness in them, that's going to get into the other wildlife, the other that waterfowl. And if there's something coming above into your pen with your animals, what's going to happen to them? The, the fact of the matter is this. Common is what, sense is that you never put animals in. in Water areas like this, that. This is a right to farm community. Mm -hmm. Regardless of that, mm -hmm. you're way too close to the water. You're the, you can't move with the PC equipment, and that's unfortunate. You're gonna have to get a bunch of buddies out there. Oh yeah, drag yeah. it out yeah. because yeah. Yeah. he gave you two weeks. Two weeks is plenty of time to figure it out. And even up until just the rain this past week, we had a week of not heavy rains. Now the our soil in this valley is unique because it drains quick. I live on the spawn. I've seen it raise feet in a day and go down feet in a day. It will go 
on sandbar by the bri our bridge that is fully exposed. But a week ago, two weeks ago, we were two feet below the I beam. So there was a fluctuation of eight feet. Yep. At least eight feet, maybe 10. Get it moved. Like two weeks is ample time to move it. It sucks, I know. But, you know, what is it, 100 bucks a day? Once yeah. the enforcement orders issued, I, we don't like in issuing enforcement orders. You look at the history, we, we don't like to do it. It's probably something that we, it is something we need to do more of, but we don't want to do it because it makes it so no one wants to work with us. Mm. So that's what it comes down to is you just got to move it. It's got to get moved, obviously not right this second, but it needs to get moved by this weekend. End of discussion. Sure. Uh, I suppose I just had questions that I want to answer. I wasn't here to argue the fact that we were going to move it or not. Um, you know, um, I was under the impression that the way it was all, it, it all started between not just you, but Mr. Dorian, that it, it started to get a little heated. Like, let's just all figure it out. But you got to move it. Like, yeah, I, you know, we, it, it sucks, but. Uh, the the other question I had is so you had said it's a it's a two hundred foot um, if it's a brand yeah brand new yeah. stream so uh, runs year round yeah what decides that is just like it's just state that's, of Massachusetts yeah, yeah. that's and that's the WPA yeah. as well yeah. the two hundred foot riverfront area that's established in the WPA sure two hundred feet for many for many river okay it's jurisdictional for is a river is it is that a river or is that it's a it's a map river, I believe it's perennial. Um, so it'd be a stream. Even if it was, or is it a brook? It doesn't. It doesn't. It's 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 yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of the questions I had too. I'm just trying to figure out distances and things for future. You know, I'd rather not do this again. Right. You know what I mean? When in doubt, we well, have, it's a very I think nominal fee for consultation. Yeah, if, if any at all. It, no, I mean, it's like you, you, you have questions. But yeah. Our, yeah. our agent will come out and talk to you about it. Yeah, I, and, and they I had no idea there was even a, a process for it. You know what I mean? When we bought our house, we weren't told that we bought 200 feet of conservation wetlands. You know what I mean? Well, it's my not house, conservation wetlands. Well, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a flood plain. Right. So we knew that we bought next to a river, so there was some you know, right. distance of flight, but we didn't know we bought a 300 foot long lot that has 200 feet of wetlands in it essentially, or buffer. Well, no, floodplain, and it's it's a little different. You can still utilize the floodplain, but utilizing it right up against the, the, the body of water is where there's a problem, right? If it wasn't so close, it would be different, but as you saw two weeks ago when the chickens were on the roof and the ducks were swimming, it, it can't work that there. Yeah, that was only what I argued against them. But that's why I was here. I just had a few questions is all. I just wanted to be more informed for future things. I'd rather not, you know, build something new. When in doubt, it's we he doesn't bite. No, I learned that. I'd rather say that. No, I learned he was very nice. Um, so if, if you live in an area that you're gonna, we're gonna get to know each other as you do projects. Um, and it's not the end of the world to ask us. Sure. Or to file an RDA. And NOI is more intense. It's sometimes required, but it's not always required. Um, it's just, it's easier to ask. I know sometimes it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, but yeah, not always. It's some cases like this. Now you know you live in a riverfront area that you just gotta go through the motions. Yeah, you live in a riverfront area. You have to go through the motions. I do. It's it's just part of yeah, living in this town. Yeah. Um, when I was looking through bylaws, because I just like I said, I wanted to be informed. Uh, one of the things I noticed was notification to abutters when. Something's going to be done within that 200 foot zone. So that's if you file an NOI or an RDA. Or an RDA. Or an RDA. No, abutters do not get notified for RDAs. 
Leonidas Bradier. Mm -hmm. this, so the, the reason I ask about that is the people building, you know, behind me mm -hmm. are obviously within that same 200 foot. Jessica, you worked with that permit? Yes. So um, your core, your eastern boundary of your property is actual stream. The property behind you um, is wetlands. So when you switch from stream to wetlands, you lose that 200 foot buffer and instead only have a 100 foot buffer. Um, so based on the site plans that we, we were given the opportunity to review for that new home, um, they did have the wetland delineated on those plants, and they did have a 100 foot buffer bumped off of that wetland. Um, so their their road, you know, their their limits of disturbance was outside of that 100 foot buffer. And because of that, conservation commission does not have any jurisdiction over um, what they do with with that construction. So um, these, yeah, these buffers change. A lot very quickly from you know if you hop from wetland to stream from wetland to stream um, they will change in size and you can't always rely on mass mapper which is the program that say in Massachusetts utilizes field field verification is, a, is very important um, in the term um, we can can't do what we can need a file and so forth um, Another thing I wanted to mention was we also got noticed that vegetation was removed. Um, and you do have the right to mow the lawn, of course, but um, I just wanted to recommend that you leave the strip uh, yeah, along the river bank, like I talked about, talk about yeah. just to ensure that the bank yeah. is stable. I don't want to. Yeah. Well, it, 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 yeah, right. if you cut back brush and you leave the stumps, that's one thing. Right. Um, especially in basils, it's sure. important to manage those. So. Yes, keeping that buffer is crucial. Mm -hmm. Unless it's in basics. Yeah. Okay. okay, so do you want to give them a deadline to move? Yeah, this weekend. Well, I'll drive by Sunday night. Okay. Or Jimmy will. Well, God knows he will. Okay. <laughs> to move the. <laughs> the two weeks have exceeded. I, but I waited that, so I don't think it's. Who holds permission? No comment. I, I have no comment. I don't know. So it's okay. No comment. All right. It's Wednesday by Sunday. Mm -hmm. I buy that and back in the fair. And we have a sidewalk for this. This yeah. is common sense agriculture. This isn't anything we need to come to the front of us for. for. This isn't anything. I had asked quite a few questions, and he said that I'm just saying here was the this place is to common ask them. sense. And and here problem. has been the place to ask them. Mm -hmm. so, it's common. I know that. Yeah, it's common sense to And any, anyone I saw doing something like that, I could like simply say, that, "You know better than put that in." Um, I get it right out of it. You seem to be more of a question. I I, I can't move because I'll get my machine stuck with this. I'd be fine right now, to be honest with you. That's all, and it should have been, it should have been moved to the it should have been already moved the moment you were notified of it. It's common sense. Anybody in the Department of Agriculture would have called you on that immediately. No questions. Move it. You could have asked the question right then and there. It would have been, it would have been done. You should have moved it immediately. If not for the preservation of your own animals. In the wetland area, with that water flowing, it shouldn't have been a question. You should have been proactive immediately. That's why I became short. That's why I became impatient. Because I know what happens with that. I've seen ponds turn green and die because of that. I've yes. seen birds and animals get in, in in bad ways because of certain situations that are small like that have a very large. And downstream, immense, immense. I mean, I know that property all the way back in the Julius really at the chicken farm next to you, and that cost them years ago with all the releasing of the nitrogen 
from the chitlins. That will turn something green and, and just choke out areas, bring in, in three areas of invasive species into. So, Okay. Well, so that answers my question. Yeah. Yeah. I think no, coming well, in. That, that was part of me trying to understand what's right. going on. Was I, I did have I wanted to know. Have you been doing chickens? Have you been doing the poultry for a while? For a while, uh, yeah. How long? A couple of years. But we've you know, obviously never. Are you been of the Asian flu? What's going on with the birds right now? Uh, to a degree. Looking at the, look into the, the, the severity of it right now with some of the turkey farmers, chicken farmers, gun farmers, you know, it's a real poison the soil. Yeah. And it will linger, it holds, it does not dissipate. The residual is, they haven't even picked it out yet. So look into it. Yeah. You know, if you want me to generate some information for you in the agricultural, I'd be more than willing to do that. But we have a serious flu, Asian flu with these birds out of it. just on the millions. Some of these farmers have had to take out an immense amount. And they have to bring incinerators in to be able to control just to, to deal with the situation. So if you, if they were infected, which God forbid they're not, you're sending that down the waterway. And if they're clean and they're healthy, Hopefully everybody above you, which you never know, are, are clean and there's no disease. Common sense is a lot to do with agriculture. It's, it, you, you have to be able to look at the situation and say, wow, this is not the ideal location to be for my animals. Any other questions? I mean, if I can help you out. No, I mean, no that, that was all. I just wanted to more understand what was going on. So. And move it by Sunday after that an enforcement order will be issued Monday morning with fines. Sure. You sending a picture? Yeah, to your email. Right, not yet. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have a nice rest of night. Thank you too. On 3.1, request for certificate of compliance from the seven scales lane, WB 2019-156. Is there a DB number associated with this? Uh, no, it is an isolated weapon. So, it is not a DB number. Isolated weapon was just to the front of the correct? Uh, well, there's two that are on the property. Um, I can pull some hats. You want to take a look? I remember from... The sidewalk I went on. Was it permanent? Five? How many years ago was that? They had an extension. They had an extension. It's a TWB 2019. So that's when it was issued. So we five years, right? Four. Yeah. 23 minus 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Stan asked us to be continued because I'm still waiting on the fee. Uh, as well as that when we went out on the sidewalk, there are some deviations from the Semitic lands. There's some stormwater deviations. So we're waiting for, for those to be addressed. Um, uh, what was it, uh, Jessica? They, they also had to install the gravel berm, the riprap berm, um, by one of the stormwater ponds. Yeah. Yeah, the to one of the, one the ponds along the skills lane is like eroding on the hill slope. So they were supposed to put in the riprap berm at the bottom and it's not there and you can just tell it's all gullied up already. So they'll fix that up. Yeah. What's, what about the fees? Uh, yeah, we're waiting on the fees. Um, I do. The fees are not paid or we're waiting. The fees are not paid. We're not discussing this at all. It's, tape is off the documents, all the fees are paid. Sure. That's um, easy. Why is it on the target if the, if the fees, I thought the fees were paid. Well, 
Sometimes if a, if a project's all good, like to be closed out, you guys will vote to do such and then we'll just actually withhold issuing the, the document itself until we receive payment. So. So with the, with the fee. Uh, yeah, I can take it off. Well, no, it's just like. If, how much is the, the fees? If that's the case, let's figure out the details before we get everything completed before it comes back to us. Okay. I'm not going to even continue. I, I don't mm -hmm. even want to discuss it. Everything has to be done ready to go when it comes back to us. There's no need to discuss it. It's mm -hmm. not like we're going to change anything. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. Short and sweet. You've got to start to make these meetings a little shorter and sweeter to the point. I know there we've had a lot of stuff that. Yeah. That we can't change that we've had to discuss, but um, right. So I'm not even going to ask to continue it. Just until everything is ready to go. Um, but yeah, you know, but that's when because this has been. I feel like we've talked about this for six months. Yeah, or maybe yeah. that was the extension. Okay, I think the extension. Yeah. All right. Okay. Moving on. Um, Three point two ratification of emergency certification for temporary culvert replacements at Old Meeting House Road. Uh, last I knew, they did what one of them, and they were going to do a second one. Yep, they did. They installed one of them um, last week uh, on the second. Yeah, August second. Um, and then their uh, Jim told me he's planning for the second one this week. Um, I'm not sure if he's done that yet, but yeah. Does that have a steel after that? Is that going to be removed? I think for now it's still going to be there until you have a long term plan, I believe, to put in a box cover. But that would be Jessica, did you have to talk to Shim or Matt? Was it you? What's the actual answer? Steel plates are staying until. Yes. Steel plates are staying, I believe, until, yeah, until the box cover. Yeah, it's going to be like that for a while, I think. But yeah, last week, like the Shaw trash truck or somebody wouldn't would, would not go over the bridge. So that's why this was rendered an emergency fix at that point. Yeah, because of the color. Because of the trash truck. truck and not a fire truck. Well, the, the trash truck's a more frequent visitor back there. It wasn't. They didn't want to drive over the steel plates, which, as you know, it just walking over them, they bounce. So, yeah. I don't blame them. Right. Ah, it's a steel plate. If we have a if we have a trash truck dump into Bixby Brook or whatever is down there, that's a problem. So. Oh, that's the state. She does. She does have a point. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna put three culverts in, right? They only got approved for two. They only got allowed to. Yeah. I don't understand that. Make it safer for the trash truck. And it shouldn't waste the time for the culvert. It should just put balls of culvert and get it from the house. He's the only box of culvert. That's that. I talked to him. Okay, so yeah, we've got to vote to ratify this before we start looking at what I just gave away. I have it in the design folder if you want to take a look at it. And I can also. Read it out loud, please. Yep. Okay. Um, this is for the old meeting house road bridge. Um, and as we mentioned, reason for emergency was trash trucks and emergency vehicles can't drive over the bridge safely. Um, I visited I visited the site on August 2nd. Uh, they started work on August 2nd. Um, and I and it was issued, um, the emergency notification form was issued August 2nd. Um, so they have to do the work by September 2nd under the emergency certification. Um, the work to be allowed is the existing culvert now consists of one 36 inch pipe after work done under a previous emergency certification form to remove one of the collapsed culverts. The previous ECF expired on July 12, 2023. The pipe that remains is still collapsed and is plugged by the beavers. Two new 36-inch 20-foot plastic corrugated pipes may be installed to replace the two collapsed culverts. Six yards of four to six inch trap rock will be back below the culverts and existing steel plates will be put back to allow resident and emergency services passage. 
this will allow the flow of water to be continue. He gave me a range, but you mentioned the trial you were six yards. Oh. Um, um, six times travel. Uh, um, material to fill in a round call? That's yeah, that's not. Uh, I can ask if you're jam if that's No, 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 I'm not even, no, I don't. That's a header. I that's care, a, but I need to be. I think we should look at the code. It's, it's a temporary situation. Yeah. So what they put in there for material fill around it. I just no, I mean, agree. I mean, it's just sources specifically. But I think Jessica's right. If a shaw truck does tip over into there, that'll that that will get their that attention. Will make that yeah. will get their attention. Good in Ian Townsend on an old meeting house. So we need a, a motion and a second to uh, ratify this emergency um, certification. To your turn it down. Three point two. Uh, okay. Patient emergency. Okay. 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 This is for ratification of emergency certification. Certification of temporary culvert replacement at Old Meeting House Road. Yep. Yeah. Um, Jimmy, do you second that? Second. Roll call vote, please. Yes. James Gates, yes. Jim Dwayne, yes. Um, it says it needs four signatures, Matt. There's only five commissioners. So. Discuss potential changes to the town of Wetland, Wetlands bylaw e schedule. This is we're just going to start this, the discussion on it. Yeah. We don't want to go down a rabbit hole because we are missing two commissioners, but. Mm. It's something that needs to get discussed. I would go brief on it and then pay what for the until really all here. Kobe, Kevin, you know, we don't have a lot of meats and taters on the commission as far as bodies, so it's important at least those. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we were asked by the town, and the town asks all the boys to look at it, um, updating their fees. Um, so um for instance you want me to run through my eggs really quick or give us a brief overview of of it um doesn't the bigger things that we've added is filing after or matt has added sorry filing after work has begun will, will result in double the fee mm -hmm. in other words doing the deed and asking for forgiveness later Situations? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, makes sense. Raising the maximum fee um, from 1,300 to 1,500. Um, putting in constructed or redeveloped uh, in the one new constructed or redeveloped single family house um, because we had that question. We to say very. It was unfortunate. It was a heated discussion. Heated discussion. So we can avoid that. With 56 Payberry, which one was out of here? That was with Chris McKenzie from Phyllis um, last week. He's already had an interesting to them have some time because he's using the same foundation or the same location. He wasn't the same foundation. Yes. In other words, he didn't want to accept the fact that it was new construction right. and not existing. Right. But say where it's, it says it on the plant, new house, mm -hmm. and it also changed the elevation of the floor. It yeah. says it. Yeah, so it said it right there. As you pointed out, new construction. Oh, the yeah. Uh, the other main thing we should bring to touch on briefly is to change right now in our fee schedule for notice of intent. We have it uh, based on 
Um, we have a base fee, and then we have uh, the plus 1.25 per feet of new delineation, or plus 2.25 uh, dollars per feet of new delineation. And we're discovering that that's not the best way to really um, base fees on new delineation um, on a wetland, uh, on a submitted site plan. So we are recommending instead having it uh, based on um, disturbance and resource areas. So it would be. Uh, so sometimes they don't do it based on linear foot of delineation. They do it square, based on the square footage of disturbance. So in other the words, they're pulling their tape measure out. The people off the board, the commission, are measuring it. Uh, no, you, well, you do a lot based on the plan, or you could, yeah, you could field measure it, which is also. Well, I, to me, that language sounds like it's field measurement. In other words, the area of disturbance, disturbance is unpredicted of what a plan shows you. That's a good point. So, so that's something that, that we need to take into consideration that you can hold the 200 foot tape measure out on the job site find, and, and get at the final actual, number. Is that will accumulate to the final number of what the final ultimately become? Yeah, these people are going to be aware of what a fine is. You disturb in a great area in excess. Guess what? We're measuring it. We're going to get the square foot. We'll add what the number is to what the fine will copulate to. Here you go. I don't think a plan will get that to us. No, you could always base the, the permit fee to that and then your certificate of compliance on the field measurement. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea as well. Yeah. Um, yes. I'll chime in real quick. So, I know. What? I was ready because I don't know what you're talking about, Jim. So, in you can in, what? Well, just I'll I'm gonna go. So, in an NOI, you you know, 99 percent of the time, you're gonna hire an engineer. They're gonna be drafting your site plan in a program called AutoCAD. In AutoCAD. It's a very simple command to measure an area and it will spit back the square footage. It's going to be, it's going to take like 10 seconds as opposed to getting out your engineering scale on a hard paper. So, um, you can you do it that way. You don't have to do that. There's free programs to do it. Or there's, right, I mean, we can't do it. So but that's the going. thing. We would, we would rely on the engineer to do it, but that would be something that we would need to, like, stand a, a standard request of all of our applications is to include the square footage of disturbance. Um, and then, of course, yes, you, I would, of course, recommend verifying it with an engineering ruler, um, you know, to make sure we're not getting shortchanged. But, but there, there is a, a very easy way for an engineer to do it oh, in their mapping program. Jimmy, Jimmy open, opened up a new door. We're going to field verify it after the work's done. And they can pay us the difference. I mean, if they're in a gross accession of what of the parameters they were supposed to be working in, wouldn't it be in our best, you know, behoove us to be able to go out there and really assess the amount of area? I mean, yeah, but to that to that effect, that's the point of a pre-construction erosion and sedimentation inspection, too. I mean, sure, you don't know exactly where contour 272 is when you're out doing your field inspection, but, you know, they're staking their straw waddles or their silt fence uh, on the plans in the field. So that should be, you know, the limit of disturbance, typically. So... I see where she's going. It, it, yeah, yeah. Also see. Like, like, further. I like your idea about, you know, like confirming after the fact, but I, without an as built requirement, I think that might be tough to do. Um, mm -hmm. So, but I like, I like the idea. A for effort. Thanks. Gold star. <laughs> Sure. The, yep. With the computer and the CADs and the, everything, you know, the square footage. And I added a, another potential uh, path to um, about NOI. If you don't like the, um, it based on square footage of disturbance, um, a 
lot of other towns also just base it off of the WPA, how they do it, um, which is based on categories. Um, okay. Then you have some data to analyze. So, okay. yeah. You can working. take these copies of it and review it. We'll have another discussion at the next meeting. The no, all of anything. Yeah. Of course, you can issue with a suggestion. Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. So we did this, it was, I think, almost about two years ago. Um, yeah. Knowing that we were going to have to do it again. Um, but you just look at the rough cost of stuff. It, it, it takes our staff time to do it. And I guess we're funded. Um, it's a good general fund, but still, we should be able to cover a lot of these costs. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Or at least the hourly rate that's involved. So, yes. Um, Pat, do you have anything you'd like so 3.3 is going to be going back on the docket again? Yes, for 12, uh, for 8.23. Okay. Pat, do you have anything you want to add or question? Are you just going to review it and we'll discuss yeah. it? Um, <clears throat> we're going to review the uh, fiscal year 2024 Conservation Commission budgets. I, I think maybe we just wait until the 23rd to discuss it. I'd like to compare it to 2023. Mm -hmm. And what was uh, budgeted revenue generated versus actual what was spent on what? Okay. Just some more okay. ideas so that we have to right. see. Yep. Because we have a budget, we need to utilize it. I, I'm not looking to cut the budget, but we need to. Yeah. Let's you know make sure that it's more hours for everybody. Well, I, I don't disagree with that. I was mean, serious more hours. And now's the time to start talking or discussing it. Are you going to bring it to one? Are you going to bring it to the? Well, you were going to read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we're all right, four point zero. Uh, no, we had three point six, which you wanted to just. Oh, three, yeah, yeah. So three point six. Um, Put that out there. One fifty eight Main Street Enforcement Order Amendment um, that Ms. Dorian has um, proposed, and I'd like them to share, and I'd um, like to get a vote on it. Um, my basic. I mean, everybody was here when I, I stated it. I just think. Well, no, Jessica wasn't. So, oh. Jessica, this is a new to you. Sorry to the spring it, but. I'm, I completely missed that. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> You've got to pay attention to this one. Well, sorry. One. What we're looking at is. Okay, so, well, so Ethan wants a snack, but he wants to sit on my lap. He can't make up his mind. I'm, I'm here. Hit it. Okay. No, I mean, where we're going with this, I think we should get a letter out to the individual that did the work at 158. It seems like it, it's a mystery contract that he came in, created an awful lot of havoc, a lot of mess. And I think he needs to be at least a letter sent to him so he knows what transpired, all the engineering costs from Mr. McGee, all the, all the problems. And so in the future, if he's going to come to town to do any work, we, I would like to know what he's doing and where he's doing it. Yeah, you would. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, not right now. I don't know um, if we have the authority to do that. Um, but. When you say authority, to, to at least notify a contractor. Well, you had mentioned requesting Mr. McGee. Correct. Which he should. I don't disagree. And I have like that. He, he has said something to him. Look at the job he did. This has cost me a lot of money. I, I agree. I mean, I think yeah, he hasn't disclosed he who the person is, but fine. <laughs> Can you repeat that? 
what if what if he is what if we find out that he's doing another job in town you know wouldn't i would like to know who it was i would yeah. like to know. in the future you need to check into cons conservation or the building inspectors for what you're doing here um I mean, I would, I would recommend whoever is on the best graces right now, then have that conversation with Mr. McGee. Um, I, like I don't was, think anybody knows who did the work. I mean, I, I agree that person did, you know, made a poor judgment. Um, mm -hmm. but, but what you're talking about, I mean, that's really like if, if Mr. McGee wanted to pursue legal action, I mean, it, that would be on him. Um, so I, I don't know then, I don't know if there's some relationship between him and the contractor at that point. I don't, I don't know. I just think that it would um, be in our best, in our best interest to know who it was and put him on notice of what transpired from his work that was performed. Okay. And yeah. Comes down again, I, I think it's. It, it's for our own protection. But doing it under the enforcement order as documentation to the request and also as the gallery to, you know, to have a copy of that letter, a certified copy of that letter with receipt that the person received it. I think it's only fair. Yeah. Uh, I, I would need to check with town council on how kosher that is um i i agree that some sort of you know educational confrontation is okay but um i, I mean if i did a job and it came out as poorly as it did with mr mcgee i i want to know about it i think i would i i would like I would like to know about it. Oh, I, I didn't think it was that bad, but yeah. you know, this well, is I mean, how many what sidewalks, if, how much engineer, yeah. how much I money for this community, and we don't know who this individual is. So I he's know. the ghost contractor that could come in at any time again. Uh, eh. mm. I, I um, think it's almost to be worth it to ask town council, what do we do to protect ourselves? What can we do to prevent this type of an exercise in the future? I, I think that's a fair request. I mean, I can also try like a Hail Mary and just reach out to him and just say that the commission is interested in educating your no, initial contractor. I don't I'm, want I'm interested in it then, and then and then just keep it. You know, it, it would be something that's kept at the staff level. Um, I, I mean, we can we can do that and have it be, you know, something slightly more confidential in that sense. Um, I don't know. We can ask around, though. Yeah. So <laughs> I just think it's important. I think maybe you should talk to the circuit writer and ask her advice as well as town council on especially the circuit rider um what do they do when something like this happens or at least yeah just get her advice did you hear that yeah, I saw okay. Matt taking notes, so I thought he was giving himself an action item, but I can help as needed. <laughs> when I say it, it yeah. that's our agent, but I also do. We can't let it go out too too long, so I think it might be a joint action item. Yeah, we can so give me a left. call next week. That's fine. That in the office until Monday, so. Right, so um, if it, the conversation started with Maya, that, that Mia. Get going. Um, because I believe yeah, this is municipal, so it's takes time. Yeah. But I just think it would be in our best interest to 
to stay on top of the contract that we've had issues in the past. I you know the I countless just, hours that they have put into it, the countless hours that I've gone out there in the rain. Mm -hmm. huh. just says the whole it's the, 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 the trauma that the dentist has even had to put It's just a lot. On. So, and it's just a sore, it, it's a black eye for this town. Mm -hmm. That's in the so, We're not going to amend it tonight, but that's the course of action I think. Are you good with Jim? Yep. Yep. We even heard the needs for him to come to one of these ending meetings. I, I don't. To get a new overview. I don't. I don't. <laughs> okay. it's just like I have it. Yeah. Gotcha. Good time tonight. So, four point one: Townsend requesting volunteers from committees and boards to join a bylaw committee. I'd like to request that we put this out there to all the other boards and committees that Conservation Commission needs commissioners. Right. Mm -hmm. Look at that, you can just, you, you can use the same wording they used. But, so is that the memo they? The memo is, uh, hello everyone, please reach out, should you or should you know of committee or, and board members being interested in forming the bylaw committee. Bylaw committee will be tasked with the review of the existing bylaws and making recommendations for changes. A meeting schedule is still to be determined. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. So it's a broad so conservation, ZBA, Pitycom, everybody. Okay. Inclusive to me. All right. Yeah. I think I have too much more than that. It's an email, but mm -hmm. it's being formed, so you're interested at all. I would okay. answer it. I will send an email to them. So, yeah, let them know or let us know. We can forward it on. Um, at the August 22nd BOS meeting, they will be appointing members of this committee. So before then, please, if you're interested. Um, the meetings are probably going to be monthly, by the way. Say the last part, sorry. The, the, I'm told the meetings are going to be monthly. But... That is an estimate. So you'll be at the board of selectmen. They're all gonna in the great room or whatever. All fine. We'll just see what happens. I'll try to get involved in some of it. So you're saying yes too? I will see. <laughs> if Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy says he's on May. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I, I will volunteer, if I'll forget. Just email her if I don't do it right now. But I would. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna email her literally right now and copy you. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Who was it? She's emailing Sabrina, the admin, admin administrative assistant. Okay. I have not met her. Either. Very nice. It's place And then, in other words, that's like what Carolyn's position was. Or yes. What? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, on 5.0 education and conferences, both may be taking uh, an NRWA workshop on the Nashua and the Statistic Rivers 9 6 to 9 8. And do you mind just going through this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Natural Rivers Wild and Clean Stewardship Council, uh, Council is having an immersive workshop, workshop on river access planning along the Nashua and Mississippi rivers. Through a mix of interactive lectures, a charrette, and on-site visits to the Pawag and Beaver Brook Association river access sites, you'll gain radical insights and hands-on experience. 
Uh, not only will you learn about the special considerations for river access design, but you'll also explore challenges, opportunities, and successful case studies. This event will receive a paper copy of the River Access Planning Guide, and gear will be provided for a half-day paddling trip on National Wild and Scenic River. Um, so this would run through, uh, from September 6th through September 8th, um, with the afternoon paddle being on September 6th. Um, but it's in the OneDrive, and uh, they gave information on how to register um, if anyone's interested. So. Yeah, I'm happy. Do you get a million new ones? No, but I like all the work that they've done up on the Mississippi and even what they've done going up in the Hollis and that whole area. They really got a good concentration of helpers and help in the between the park areas, in the parking areas, and reclamation clean. And they've done a lot of nice stuff up there. And they work with the horse people, they work with the snowmobilers too to go out on those trails in the wintertime. I mean, so that New Hampshire group has been, they've done a really nice job. And the snowmobilers help out with Beaver Brook in the summertime, clearing the six to eights up for the, because when you have deep snow, and they're moving by the work with DCR. So I think we'll it's mass wildlife that doesn't close us. No, not at all. It closes everything right down tighter than anything. And it isn't fair. So that's another. So and if anyone wants to do it, um, oh. I know you don't email. I'm sure you could ask all of them. Okay. We'll try that. I, I know some of them up there. So, all right. I'll put a question mark on that one. Okay. For nine six. Okay. Um, Five point two MACC twenty twenty three fall con conference uh, is October twenty eighth at Devons. It's going to be at Devons. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to on that one. Torn between that and the maple. They also have like all the Zoom fundamentals, I think the week before, um, FYI, at night, they're like 6 to 8.30. But this is just like the usual fall book, book class that we do with MACC, like we did at the college in Worcester and all these. Oh, excuse me. Um, joint conservation commissioners and agents, environmental officers, consultants, attorneys, students, act activists, and and other others at the MACC Fall Conference 2023. Learn, ask, understand, network, enjoy the day, and bring home information you can use connect with people from across. Yeah, the world. I will. I'm in Berlin in a few years now, so I will. Do we have to sign right after that one, Matt, or can you just put us right in for it, or we have to do it ourselves? With um, I think it's too early even to sign up, because right. um, there was nowhere, uh, from what I saw on the website, to sign up yet. Um, it yeah. said information on this year's conference is coming in early September, so. We'll be chatting about it in between. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's something that yep. you continue to put on the agendas um, to remind us. Sure. Um, you know, we might just glance over it, but. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, TV, how do you have for discussion at the next one? Yeah. No. I need to tell you. Uh, I think for discussion at the next meeting, uh, potential changes to wetland bylaws, fee schedule, uh, the uh, comparing 2023 and 2024 uh, con budgets um, and hopefully voting for officers. Um, mm. We do have currently have two openings for the commission and uh, if anyone is interested, please uh, fill out the volunteer um, request form. Um, next meeting is Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. for select chambers, second this meeting will also be held via virtual Zoom remote in accordance with COVID-19 safety guidelines. And motion and a second to adjourn. A motion that we adjourn the meeting today. 8.40 p.m. 8.40 p.m. And second that. Roll call vote. Yes. Jim Dryan. James Gates, yes. 
Okay, goodbye everyone.